It's not bad. So, the paste I'm used to using, I use I use Kester paste at work, um, but it's kind of expensive. Uh, this is considerably thicker than the Kester paste I normally use, um, and you can kind of you probably saw it like peeled up from some of the you know these big pads. I don't know how visible it was, but I'd squeegee it across, and it would kind of drag the paste along, um, and then there'd be you know a big void at one end. So I kind of wound up putting it on pretty heavy. But on the whole, it came out pretty decently. Um, cheap paste is cheap, I guess. What do you expect? Um, actually, that reminds me. Yeah, the one thing. So, so I can test the LMK stuff separately. So I have a series resistor filter, which is this resistor here. So I am going to uh, not place the solder or I'm going to not place that part and then that basically means that the power supply can be tested independently because this is a like a roughly 10 ohm series resistor after the LNK 302 power supply also here's a close up of the board that's kind of interesting uh, oh no wait no this is so this is a rectangular solder mask but the trench is round that's kind of amusing Came out nice okay placing
So here's the board. It's pretty well done. Uh, most of the stuff, I mean, alignment like this isn't critical. It bothers me, but that's just because I'm kind of nuts. Um, Mr. Divider, or various things. These, the footprint for these um, big inductors, I mean, it's this huge footprint. Uh, but go figure, that was, you know, I took that straight out of the data sheet. I don't know. All my diodes are in the right way. Let's double check all the polarity indicators. Um, so this is the series resistor in the, uh, you know, the power supply. And by leaving that out, I'm basically disconnecting the, uh, the L and K supply from the rest of the circuit. Anyways, on to soldering. So here's this aluminium plate I showed the other day. This is the one that was smoking a bit. I um, snubbed the snot out of it with isopropyl alcohol um, and cleaned up the holes and a lot of other things. Actually, it still feels a little oily. So this is obviously X tooling plate uh, from my job. Uh, the advantage of tooling plate is it's free. The disadvantage is, you know, A, it's got you know, assorted holes in it, and B, it's typically kind of greasy. Because it's, you know, basically used on a machine somewhere. So, you know, I mean, obviously, I'm pretty sure that's just, like, surface oxide rubbing off. You can pretty much always scrub it with aluminium and get something. But the advantage of this is that it's really thick, so I should get very coherent heat distribution. Also, um, this was the only electric grill, uh, electric, uh, stove top they had at my local Kmart, so I'm kind of stuck with it. So actually, a good thing to do in this situation would be take a bit of solder. So I'm going to heat this up until solder melts on it, and then I'm just going to plop the board down. So what I can do is make a little solder roll up and just leave it on there. And when that reflows, I know I'm up to temperature. So I really, I, I, I have a thermocouple temperature probe on the, in the mail, but I don't have it yet. So, um, that can just sit in that hole. It's definitely, it's putting out heat. The coil heats up a lot faster. This aluminum has a lot of thermal mass. Uh, it's getting too hot to touch. I mean, I have a, a non-contact infrared thermometer, but non-contact thermometers and aluminium surfaces just don't work um, for an assortment of reasons. I may actually make a video on that. The surface is a bit rough, but I don't think it's any rougher than the... Uh, it's any rougher than the board. So what I'd really like to do to make this proper is, um, you know, well, one, uh, what I'm, pr I, I'm probably going to wind up doing if I, you know, go to any sort of production and this sort of thing, is uh, stick a thermocouple, like drill a hole in here, stick a thermocouple in there, and then make a, a reflow griddle controller, you know, uh, something along the lines of the reflow toaster oven, but uh, control like the, the heated elements of this instead. It smells a bit like hot metal. Which I suppose is just all the crap in the heating coils burning off. I haven't had a chance to just run this at full tilt outside for, like, a period of time yet. So, this is actually the first time it's really been on. I don't know if it's boiling or that's just the carbonation in the coke. Oh, it's steaming. So I cleaned the coke off there just because I figured it would probably get kind of nasty. What I actually do do is I have, here's my <laughs> squirty bottle for my soldering. Okay, we're hot. So that's a cheap and cheerful uh, temperature sensing mechanism. This is not a very deep hole. So the reason I put the solder in the hole is because since it's enclosed by the aluminium, it will uh, heat up more rapidly because it's not radiating, it's not dissipating heat into the ambient through radiant dissipation. It's probably not as big of a deal, but um, you know, I I'm kind of coming from a cryo background a little bit. We do a lot of cryo stuff at work and Radiated heat transfer is one of the biggest problems. The, in, the intuitive models of 
the behavior I have are not necessarily broadly applicable, but I'm stuck with them. So it's quite warm. At least it's not smoking this time. Before I cleaned this plate, I put it on there and heated it up for a little while and it started smoking all over the place. So I guess I got all of the stuff that really burns. Fortunately, there's a lot of airflow in this room. I have my skylight open, which is right above us, or right above the camera. So, I'm not too worried about doing this indoors. So I'm obviously I'm only doing one board right now. That's mostly because, uh, in my experience, the first time you do anything is when you learn how to do that, whatever you're trying to do correctly. So one board will let me kind of figure everything out and see what I'm doing, and then I can test it and make sure I didn't do anything wrong and I won't waste the parts on, you know, the rest of the boards. Ha! Solder just melted. Okay, so... So you can see the rosin's burning off here, and this is wisping a bit. I've seen anything reflow yet, but it's getting close. The whole board is kind of tacoing a little bit because the bottom of the south side of the board is expanding more rapidly. ICs are starting to reflow. So the whole board is kind of going up like that, which is why I'm pressing on the ends. ICs have reflowed. Small passes appear to have reflowed. Oh, first inductor is reflowing. So I'm waiting on the inductors. Diodes have reflowed. Alright, let me just kind of nudge this inductor. Okay. Looks like we're done. Okay. So, I'm going to let this cool down. It'll probably take an hour or two. Uh, I'm actually going to go make a sandwich. And then we will take a look at this under the microscope, or the micro macro lens, if you will. So I actually realized I really want to kind of do a, a double a, a check of the board before everything cools. So. It looks like it came out really well. I'm actually really impressed. That's way easier than what I've been doing, which is, you know, manual solder paste placement and then manual reflowing. Um, I may want to add some, I, I don't know, I like big, pleasantly sized fillets, so, I, you know, my reaction to these diodes is add solder, but I think that that's probably just an artifact of my, you know, entirely hand soldered history. I don't see any solder bridges at all, that was, I'm really happy about that. That was way too easy. This is, this is far too successful. I'm probably gonna power it up and it's gonna catch fire now just to make up for the success, you know, the it, It's just trying to lull me into a sense of security or something damn I think what I'll do in the future is I may try and macro lens in on the uh, This board as it reflows that'd be pretty cool Anyways cool, so I'll have more information in a few days um, I don't think I'm going to, well, I mean, I'm going to make a video about this and then I'll probably have a, a follow-up video of actually testing it in the next few days. I'm not too sure.